These are a couple of minor problems that I have with my Hemiway uh, bicycle after the first 100 miles. After a very, very rough 100 miles. As you can see, it has been modified and transformed and I pushed it to the limits, as you can see in these videos. But there's a couple of things that went wrong and I want to go through this video and show you what I've done wrong and what you shouldn't do. First problem is one of the cranks uh, I broke, so uh, when I have assembled the bicycle I didn't tighten, didn't tighten it, uh, it properly, properly on this side of the crank. So what happened is that um, the bolt stripped out the uh, crank and that was the end of it. So I had to buy another one, it cost me $30, this was my fault. So I, I never tightened this bolt, I just put it hands on and I, I, I forgot to, to tighten it and that literally broke the thread in. It's, it's aluminum. So people say that aluminum are a little bit um, easier to break over here, and that's true because the metal is not as strong. But also they have a better mating over here with the crank itself. Um, so because of that, I I decided to replace them with exactly the same thing. Seven gear. Second problem that I had is, for, of course, I got flat tires, and surprisingly, even though I got more pins in the rear, the front got the flat. Still have it here. So I had two holes in the front. Uh, as you can see, this cactus really did a, uh, a trick on me. Uh, it was in the middle of the trail and there's a really, really nasty cactus over here in Vegas and uh, I had two holes in the front, none in the back yet, so the back still holds pressure. What's interesting about these tires is that even though I'm running 10 PSI when I'm riding on trails, they only lowered uh, the front only lowered to 4 PSI and I came home and I didn't even notice until I got home and I, I, I put my hand on it and I realized that it's a lot softer. The grip was great, so these fat tires, they don't run at high pressure and uh, the, the needles from the cactus just couldn't... Um, let enough air out after 4 PSI, so I still had a lot of uh, pressure left in to the tires when I got home. This is fun! This part is so smooth! Cactus! Cactus! If you want to do yourself a favor, uh, get one of these uh, pumps with you or a manual pump. If you have it with you, what's gonna happen is that you will be able to inflate the tires uh, on the go and you don't have to actually patch them on a trail. I've ordered some patches, but uh, definitely gonna need uh, some kind of like a way to inflate them and they will last you for miles and miles before you have to put air again. Too much fun. The third problem that I have, which is, uh, this is actually uh, kind of like a design flaw warranty kind of a thing. Uh, what happens is that I have to buy this tool uh, to be able to remove the crank. So first I have to remove this uh, crank out. Uh, I have to remove the, uh, the, the core of the crank also with this special tool because these bolts over here get loose. So I'm going to take that off again because when you pedal, you feel like there's like a little click that happens in the pedals and these don't get really, really tight. So I took them off once, I've tightened them and then they got loose again. So this time I'm going to take them out again and then put some Loctite on them and, and lock them. So um, let's see if that's going to solve the problem because when you pedal, you, you're shifting this thing enough to start making like a little cl clicking, cranking noise and that will eat up the material and make it bigger problems. And look, we came out and now all you have to do is just unscrew this and get it ready for put it back in. Arrange and Let's see. Oh yeah, see this is loose again. So this got, got loose again and that's why it's moving. So what I'm going to do today, I'm going to take it off completely and put Loctite on it. Because it seems that it's keep getting loose and I'm sick and tired of uh, taking the crank off. And this is a thread locker. We're going to put it on the thread and then we're going to push this thing in and then lock it. So that way it n doesn't move, it doesn't unscrew itself when you pedal. These are available on Amazon. I'm going to put a link at the bottom of the video for those that are interested. And there it is. I the blue stuff is over here and then I'm gonna just uh, crank this side in and then go on the other side. This is not the most expensive crank, this is not the most expensive thing I would like to last. Right now I'm gonna crank it up and it's gonna pull both sides so you don't have to crank on the other side. As long as you have Loctite on it, it doesn't move. That's, that's the trick. So I got it very tight last time but just never really 
worked. Okay, so this is super tight right now. And hopefully the Loctite is gonna hold it in place. And I like to put my sensor a little bit high up here so the rocks don't, don't hit it. Uh, that's how long the cable is anyway, so. And now we're ready to put the crank back on. Make sure that you match it with the right, uh, with the other one. And this bolt should just crank it in there. Some people hammer it in, but this bolt is meant to just get it into place. Cool, we're ready to go riding. Whoa, 30 miles an hour, that thing is a little bit crazy to jump. I've noticed that the GPS on the camera is a couple of seconds behind. So, every time I'm slowing down, then it slows down two seconds later. I promise myself I'm not gonna go home with battery. Oh. Oh, there's a climb over here. Get the gear right. Gear number one, let's see if I can make this ledge. Last time I got hurt on one. Let's see. Oh, easy. <laughs> Throttle. Oh, that was fun.